Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru at Prince George here. Today we're taking a look at the 2023 Subaru Forester Wilderness in that geyser blue. So this is that blue that you always see advertised on the commercials for the Outback and the Forester, the wilderness trim level in that geyser blue. So. Wilderness Forester, most off-road oriented Forester they make. You have additional ground clearance. You get extra underbody protection in the form of skid plates. And visually, you get this big matte black hood, decal, decal, sticker, adhesive, whatever you want to call it. I know some people online have pulled this off. I don't know how easy that is, but it has been removed by people. So if you don't like it, that's the only thing holding you back. I'm sure that you can sort that out. Big, imposing front grille on this Forester Wilderness. We have a front view off-road slash parking camera right below the logo there. And the front bumper is very, very different versus the other Foresters. A lot more plastic cladding. The idea is the cladding is going to take a little bit more abuse than paint will without marking up. We have forward-facing six LED Gatling gun style fog lights. Headlights are fairly small, LED steering responsive. Aluminum skid plate, engine underguard, whatever you'd like to call it. And there is a spot to insert a tow hook so you can recover other vehicles. Unlikely you'll need to be recovered, but you could use it for that too if you get yourself caught in a sticky situation. You get very aggressive wheel arches, fender flares, whatever you want to call them, that textured cladding. And of course you do get all terrains. You get Yokohama Geolander AT tires on the exclusive 17 inch matte black wheels. So these are not the most aggressive all-terrain tire ever, but they're a good mix of off-road performance along with highway comfort because everyone's looking for the best of both worlds. And these tires are actually snowflake rated. So you can drive them four seasons a year legally on all the roads in BC here. Get three exterior wilderness badges. Anodized copper is always the highlight color on the wilderness trim levels. These are not painted. These are actually the same material as the cladding. That's why it's the same texture. We've got integrated turn signals. These will take a lot of abuse if you're driving through the bush or even from rock chips on the highway. This is a little bit more durable than paint. You've got lots of cladding along the bottom. Stop it from getting marked up by rocks. Forester in anodized copper. Up top, your roof racks, same thing. You've got anodized copper, integrated tie downs on all three of the supports. Now, these are thicker roof rails than the standard Forester. So the standard Forester crossbars won't work. You have to get the Thule extended ones, or I'm sure that there's some other aftermarket manufacturer that does work for that. But they're expecting you to be able to put rooftop tents and the like on top of the Forester. At the rear, wilderness in the black cladding you have those little black circles and they'll actually have those are your backup sensors they'll actually apply the brakes if it thinks you're going to hit something in reverse between speeds of 1 and 15 kilometers an hour wilderness comes with the bumper step pad from factory that is not an addition you need to add on it just comes like that so it protects the rear bumper front when you're loading things in and out or you have dogs or other pets jumping in and out blacked out badging your other wilderness badge blacked out badging Kind of like the sport, it's blacked out between the taillights. But again, this is that same cladding material and that cladding actually extends all the way up here. Your shark fin antenna, it's body colored. Then it is a power lift gate. You can do it from the key fob, you can do it from the driver's seat, you can do it from the door itself. Up it goes. And you can set this to only open to a certain height. If you park in like a low parking garage or something, that's not a problem. Huge amount of storage in the rear of the Forester. Very tall, wide, and deep with a boxy rear end that you find on the Forester, that's to be expected. Privacy cover, hides everything from the top of the seats down. Fairly standard in most of the Subaru models. It is removable, it's just telescopic, and you can actually tuck this underneath the false floor. I'll show you that here in a minute. You've got a little bit of a lip on your cargo tray. Help contain anything that may spill. Toss wet clothes, you've got a wet dog back here. Hopefully it helps contain that. We've got four hard mount tie downs, one in each corner, easy to, easier to secure things. We have grocery bag hooks on both sides. We've got a 12 volt outlet on the rear driver's side. And if you need to fold the seats down, you don't have to walk up to the second row, simply pull. And of course the seat belt's holding that up. We'll see if this one will do it. Uh, they're being held up, but they do go down, I promise. 
There we go. <laughs> and that third seat belt caught that. You can undo this third seat belt and just unclip it and it'll retract into the roof. We have grocery bag hooks, hooks in general. They don't have a whole bunch of weight. It's like three kilograms, six pounds sort of deal. But you could use that when you're stationary camping. I probably wouldn't have anything hanging off there while driving. We have another hook, LED cargo light. You can turn it off or set it to door and it'll shut off when you close the hatch. You can pull down to close it. You can close it from the button. You can lock and close it. You can do it from the key fob. You can do it from the driver's seat. You've got a lot of options. If I do this, it's going to close. It's going to lock. We're going to get an audible and a visual. And let's confirm that it's locked. And then we're going to prove that it's locked and I didn't just have the driver door unlocked. So when it unlocks, we're going to get a little light right there. And it's open. <laughs> Click unlock there. We'll go to the second row. The idea behind the lock button there and close is I don't have to fish my keys out of my pocket or my bag and I don't have to walk back up front and click lock. Pretty cool. Now with these seats folded down, which I'll get that one in a second, you've got kind of a rubberized material. It's not the same as the cargo tray material, but dog hair is not going to work its way in. It's a little bit more durable, easier to clean. You can get seat back protectors that are the same material as the cargo tray for this, but this is pretty darn good if you're not going to have these seats folded down all the time for heavy cargo use. See the red? That means that it's unlocked. Now it's locked. And as you would imagine, lots of room in the rear, lots of room in the second row. Now, this seating material is not cloth, it's not leather, it's StarTex. And you'll notice it's textured, but it's not perforated. So this material is 20% recycled plastic and the rest is synthetic. So it's really easy to be clean. They built this material because it's a Subaru made material with the idea of being able to go out in the wilderness, in the bush, take your dog out, get muddy, take care of yourself when you get home, then come out and wipe it down. Super easy. Durability, I haven't had anyone come back with any issues from my customer base. Fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. We have vents out of the center console. So you've got vents underneath each front seat in addition to out of the center console so you get much more airflow to the second row. Two USB ports, USB-C for charging, or USB-A, sorry. Three individual pockets on the backs of both front seats for storage. You do get the high wall rubber floor mats with the wilderness. This is textured and designed to be grippy because if you're loading something on the roof, this is quite tall. This is essentially eye level for me. I'm a taller guy. So reaching up here, especially if you've got a big Thule box or a ski carrier that's mounted in the middle, not necessarily ideal. That is a much better option than standing on the tire. And the reason I say that is the tire actually sits a decent in amount inside of the fender. And if you go, if you're standing there and you're going straight up, you're pretty much at the back if you have something mounted right to the rear. So you'd be leaning anyways. Door card, soft touch material, soft touch armrest. You've got wilderness badging and anodized copper accents all throughout the vehicle. Power window, you get that same kind of cladding material on the inside. They've, they haven't done like a faux carbon fiber or anything. It's very, very similar to the cladding that you have on the exterior. Bottle holder with additional storage. And if you need it, kids, grandkids, inebriated friends, child lock. Give that a better close. So I was showing you earlier, it's a proximity key. So this just needs to be on your person within 46 inches of either the front driver door or front passenger door when you grab it. So keys in my pocket. To lock it, I touch these lines and it locks. Whenever you do that, you do get the chime and you get the hazards flashing. You can disable that in the settings if you don't like it. And then put my hand in and it unlocks. Super easy front door card looks very very similar to the rear wilderness badge anodized copper soft touch soft touch window lock window controls you've got your power mirror more cladding material inside bottle holder with additional storage and then down here it gives you a little warning for the rear diff temp if it gets too warm pull over don't keep driving on the inside 
very, very spacious. They're great. Lots of room, power driver's seat, including lumbar support. And it's the same material in the front as it is in the rear, just on the headrest. It says Subaru Wilderness. And these headrests are tiltable. So you can adjust it depending how close you like the headrest to the back of your head. And obviously the closer the headrest is to the back of your head, the less likely you are to get whiplash. But comfort's also important. By the driver's left knee, we have several buttons. So we've got the ability to open the rear hatch. We have steering responsive headlights. So those are the headlights that swivel left and right when you turn. That's so you can set the memory height for the tailgate. We've got a scroll wheel for the brightness of the gauges. Traction control, you can deactivate the start stop and that's your blind spot detection. Now, I'd mentioned the floor mats. Second row doesn't get the badge. Front ones get the wilderness badge and you get the aluminum pedals with the rubber grippies. And that's pretty standard on the Wilderness Forester. Uh, not an accessory, these came from factory like this, which is very cool. When you're inside, looking at the steering wheel, steering wheel initially looks very busy. There's a lot of buttons, but it's very simple when you initially, or after your initial introduction to the vehicle. But let's turn it on. So, keys in my pocket, foot's on the brake, light is green, green means go. Foot's not on the brake, light is off. Can't start the car. Green means go. Orange light in your side mirror is your blind spot detection. So it illuminates on the corresponding side when someone's in your blind spot or going to be in your blind spot momentarily. Great aid. It's great. Doesn't eliminate shoulder checking, but it's pretty cool. Left-hand side of the steering wheel, we have our Bluetooth and audio controls. You can make and take calls, decline calls, hang up, switch from AM to FM to CD to satellite. Yes, we have a CD player in the Forester. Switch between presets. We've got our volume decline, issue voice commands, and the info button will change our small screen up there, which I'll show you in a minute. Right hand side, we have our adaptive cruise, increase or decrease follow distance, and our lane centering. So both of those systems use our two color stereo eyesight cameras here, these black boxes. This is the most up-to-date eyesight system Subaru offers, eyesight 4.0, and it'll do all of your automatic emergency braking, your lane centering, the adaptive cruise, so you'll notice that there's four bars ahead of the vehicle, all the way down to one. The bars are a ratio, four bars, 100 kilometers an hour, roughly 150 to 180 feet behind the vehicle ahead of you. You will follow it if you catch up. Great for long distance trips, I'm a huge fan of it. If you don't wanna use adaptive cruise, turn on the cruise, press and hold, down arrow, or the up arrow, either one works, I just like the down one because it's easier for my thumb. Goes to traditional cruise, pretty cool. Turn it back on, press and hold, I'll just do it with the opposite one. There you go, you've got your adaptive. Lane centering, off, on. Little steering wheel with the lines on it. There's gray lines on either side of the distance markers. If those illuminate white, above 60 kilometers an hour, that means that these two cameras can see the road lines and it'll actually give you gentle steering input to help keep you in the middle of your lane. It's great. Uh, I didn't think I'd like it. You're way less fatigued at the end of the day when you're not automatically making little corrections. It helps. It is easy to overpower. It's not going to rip the steering wheel out of your hand and put you back in the lane if you're dodging a moose or a car or another pedestrian, something like that. It's a great system. Again, Subaru stuff are enhancements for your driving, not replacements. Turn those off. We have intelligent and sport sharp drive mode. So this is exclusive to the wilderness and the sport. So intelligent is for everyday driving and it says P for park, I for intelligent next to it. It won't let you go into sport sharp if the engine's not warm enough and transmission aren't warm enough, but it will. And you'll notice that line, so that's intelligent. The purple line's very, very aggressive. You're gonna accelerate faster, you're gonna move faster. It's pretty cool. It doesn't turn it into a race car, but it is more responsive. You do get going faster. Heated wheel, best thing ever. Your hands get nice and toasty. And I didn't mention these. So these arrows right here change our small little center display between our speedometer and our tachometer. So it doesn't matter which arrow I pull, down or up, it just goes in a big loop. It gives you different pieces of information depending what you want to look at. We get the wilderness badge, anodized copper surrounds. Headlights are turned on right now. Fog lights are on. Set them to auto. And you do have the momentary safety switch. So it just springs back to auto. You can't accidentally turn your headlights off. You have to pull and hold. So if you're at the drive-in or something, you do that. But I like them on. Paddles, downshift, upshift. You can manually select your own gears with the automatic CVT if you want. 
right hand stick here, wipers. The end here is for your rear wiper. Little display up top here. I'd mentioned you can press the info button to change the screen and it gives you different information depending what you want to look at. Gauges, fuel economy, date, time, all of the important stuff. And it's, it's a personal preference thing what you want to look at. I personally like the gauges. It's also where a climate control displays. I'll show you that here in a second. Below that, we have our eight inch infotainment screen. So it is touchscreen where we have physical buttons below. Apps, we've got wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. After the vehicle's registered, you'll have access to my Subaru app. Phone, hook up your phone for Bluetooth. No, we're not gonna do that. You've got the home button or the home button. When you put it in reverse, backup camera pops up. It does show you the top of the bumper so you have something to relate to. We've got rear assist braking. We have pa parking sensors. The sensors are saying, hey, you're good. They'll start beeping when you get close. And as I turn the wheel, those lines move, show you where you're gonna end up. I can clean the backup camera by twisting and holding this back towards myself. I'm not gonna do that because the new owner is gonna come pick it up and I don't want washer fluid all over the back of the vehicle. CD player with eject, volume and tuning knobs. And then below that, we have our climate controls. So driver's side temp, passenger side temp, fan strength, mode changes where the airflow is coming from. And sync just means that it's driver's side and passenger side linked together for temperature. So climate's up top. I'm going to twist the driver knob to the left, it's gonna go down. Ranges from 15 on the low side, and I'm gonna twist the passenger side. It goes all the way up to 29 and a half, call it 30. And then if I just press sync, it goes back to driver control, low. And then as I press mode, you can see the little arrow on the person there changes, shows you where you're gonna end up, where the airflow is gonna be directed. Same thing with fan strike. Below that, we have a little storage cubby, rubberized. They're expecting you to put a device there. You've got two USBs, an aux port, and a 12 volt outlet for any charging needs you may have. It, as I mentioned, automatic CVT, we do have manual mode. And we've got anodized copper highlights. I like the shifter boot with the copper. And then on the center console, we have our parking brake. Pull up to turn it on. My foot is not on the brake, you push down, it doesn't go off, and it says to press the brake. Foot's on the brake, push down, off it goes. We have AVH, which is a brake holder, auto vehicle hold. It'll hold the brake for you, good for construction, drive through, and rush hour traffic in a place that isn't Prince George. Heated seats, high and low for both the driver and passenger. With this material, it gets pretty warm pretty quick. We've of course got our center console with our cup holders, a little bit of storage here. Then we have dual function X mode. So this is like 4x4 low in a pickup, not quite as extreme, but it's Subaru's equivalent. Use is under 40K an hour. You have to be going under 20 to engage it. Twist to the left, and we get X mode. X mode screen pops up up there. You can see the little rough terrain icon and the downhill descent control. Twist to the right. Deep snow and mud also turns off traction control. So that one allows your wheels to spin excessively to chew you through. So you can exceed 40K an hour, it'll kick out or press down, it goes back to normal. Very, very easy to use. And if you're driving down the road at 100K an hour and someone twists it, it's just gonna go beep beep and nothing bad's gonna happen. It can't actually hurt it. It's got some built-in safeties, which is smart. My favorite feature ever in any vehicle, auto dimming rear view mirror. There's no switch to flick. It automatically dims if someone has their brights on behind you. You can hook up to three separate garage doors to your home link mirror there. Integrated compass. And then above it, we have lane sway and automatic emergency braking. This one will beep if you start crossing lines without signaling, again, using these two cameras. And then the automatic emergency braking is designed to stop you from hitting pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles. They won't give you statistics for animals, but I had someone tell me it stopped them from hitting a moose, which is pretty significant. We have our sunroof slide control, SOS, and roadside slash concierge. That's part of the three-year trial to the connected services you get with most new Subarus. LED map lights, sunglass storage. Now, it's a large sunroof. It does extend into the second row. It is slide only, not tilt, but yeah, pretty big. And the headliner in the wilderness is black. I don't feel claustrophobic. I don't think it takes away from it. Card holder, vanity mirror with light, and an extender. 
which is pretty cool when the sun's directly beside you. Now, let's take a look under the hood. Down below here, little icon, car with a hood. Now, to open this, it's a little different than the other Subarus that I generally show. Essentially, go in just to the right of the stars and you move from right to left and you lift. It's right there. So it's the 2.5 liter four cylinder boxer engine, 182 horsepower. It's not a race car, but it can definitely get out of its own way. Pretty much everything the average consumer is gonna touch is in yellow, dipstick, coolant, oil, washer fluid, brake fluid. Your oil filters up top and air filters easy to access. So, and then you've got that nice Subaru boxer engine cover. And then I don't like to put these down and then and then push on the hood to close it. I just like to drop it. That's a personal preference thing. Mileage is going to vary depending on what you're comfortable with. But that is a quick look at the 2023 Subaru Forester Wilderness in the geyser blue. Great looking color. Kind of changes depending what light you're on. I'll give you guys a full walk around. Probably going to get a little close here because I'm close to the wall. But... Very, very popular trim level. Probably the most popular trim level that we get requested for, have requests for in the Forester. That's a quick overview of the 2023 Subaru Forester Wilderness. I'm Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru of Prince George. If you guys have any questions about this car, any of the cars in our lineup, any of the tech that I showed, or you have any questions about any of the other vehicles in our lineup, please put them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer you guys' questions. And if you're in British Columbia looking for a car, please reach out to me directly. I'm more than happy to help. We generally have less wait times for vehicles than larger dealers where we don't have quite the same population base as some of those larger dealers so it's easier for us to get you things again tyson the super specialist from super prince george thanks for watching we'll talk soon